Okay, so the fourth lecture, we're gonna walk through the Fayette's theorem. <clears throat> so let's start. So given this type of series, well, this series has no limit because its partial sum, its sequence of partial sum diverges. But we might say the limit is one over two. Okay, like the, the average. Okay, so the definition is that, so S are the partial sums, so the average of partial sum is defined to be sigma n is the f cesaro mean of the partial sum or the f cesaro sum of this uh, sequence. Now, if this converges, then we say we say that the series is cesaro simple. Okay? So each term here are series. We're taking the average of series. Okay, now if this sequence converges, then we say that it is Cesaro summable. All right, so here is an exercise. It says that if a series is converged, then it's Cesaro summable. So if series converges implies that it's Cesaro summable. So Cesaro summable is something that's stronger, right? So we follow the hint, assume that S is equal to zero, okay? Now, which means for any epsilon, we can pick n1 such that we have this for any n greater than n1. Now we pick n greater than n1 such that for any n greater than n1, now this is a finite number, so this divided by n is less than epsilon over 2. Okay, we can make this epsilon over 2 too. Doesn't matter. Okay, doesn't matter. Now, this is doable because it's just by the Archimedean property, okay? By Archimedean property. Now, to consider this sum, we use triangle inequality and we break them apart. So this part is less than epsilon over two. And this part, well, because each of them is less than epsilon over two, then it's less than some constant times epsilon. Well, together you group them, you get some constant times epsilon again. Well, which means that this converges to zero, right? This converges to zero as n goes to infinity. Now, if s is not zero, then this sequence converges to zero. Now, their average, well, this is really just this, right? Because you have n up to s and you divide by n, they cancel out and it goes to zero, which means that, well, this goes to zero means this goes to s, so as desired. We prove that convergence implies the sorrow summable. Now, although the from last time we see that dear Schiller kernels are not good, but their average are good kernels. Okay. So we define the sigma n of f x to be the the mean of each of them are the partial sum of Fourier series of f. Okay. Then we take their average. Now, since S and F is the convolution of F with the Dirichlet kernel, then we define F and X to be the Fayette kernel. The Fayette kernel is the average of the Dirichlet kernel. Now this gives that this is equal to this. Okay, this is equal to this. Given that we have this and this, okay? Well, each of them, we change it into this. And here we use the linearity or distributivity of uh, convolution. Then we got, we got this, okay? Linearity and distributivity, which is the linearity of convolution. Okay, so we have this important uh, equality. So here we have one thing to do is that prove the Fourier kernel is given by this. So we have the closed form, okay? So we let omega to e to the ix, then dn is equal to, well, you, by, by definition, and you're grouped in and you use geometric um, sum. And you just, re you just regroup and do some algebra trick, right? Okay, 
Now n f n x. We fold the hint as equal to this. Okay, n f n x equal to this. So we just copy this down, and we we factor out this, and we break them apart, and each of them we use the formula of geometric sum, and right here. We here we divide we divide oh I mean we multiply omega on on top and bottom right and we can group them we got this and then here expand we have this if we uh, should be plus one here so if we divide we we divide one over w on top and bottom we got this this. Now remember omega is equal to e to the i and ix. Yeah, e to the ix. So it's cis cis x, right? Cis x. We have negative, and if you add them up, remember the imaginary part cancels out. Gives you two times cos x. Right now here you use some trig identity. And it gives you this. Also n times this gives you this. So fn is this divided by n. Okay, so we have this formula. Now here leads to lemma 5.1, which says that, well, we have this, and Freya kernels is a good kernel. So we want to verify that it's a good kernel. First, let's verify the first property of being a good kernel. So this is equal to this, and they're in fact equal to one. Why? So each Dirichlet kernel is equal to this by definition, and this integral is this integral, right? Well, which is you evaluate. Well, this you use the linearity so you can pull up pull out the the, the addition sign, and now you have. Well, when n is not 0, we can integrate this. When n is 0, this thing is just 1, right? The entire thing, the entire thing is just 1, right? And 1, if it's 1, then it's 2 pi. Its integral is 2 pi. Right, so this plus 2 pi, and each of them notice that you're a multiple of pi. Well, sine being a multiple of pi, it, it just vanishes. So it's just 0 plus 2 pi gives you 2 pi. So each of them, you got 2 pi. So you got n times 2 pi. Right? This thing is 1 over n times n times 2 pi. And then here you divide by 2 pi. Cancel out, gives you 1. Okay? Gives you 1. And b is by, by the formula, right? We have is non negative. So a implies b. And for c, notice that we have this, right? Well, sine of square root of x over 2 is equal to this. For x between delta and pi. So look at the graph of cosine. So cosine is like, cosine is decreasing. If cosine is decreasing, then 1 minus cosine is increasing. Right? So this is increasing for here. Which means that for this, we have this is greater than some fixed constant, right? For each given delta, we have this greater than some fixed constant because you're increasing, right? You're increasing, so you might pass through some constant. And after that, you're, you're always greater than the constant. Okay, now, then we have fn is less than or equal to this. Okay, so let me explain this. So. This is greater than some constant. So you take a reciprocal, it's less than 1 over n times less than 1 over n times the constant, right? Now this thing is less than 1, less than even 1, so it's going to put 1 here. So it's just going to be 1 over mc delta, right? Sign, no matter what, you're always less than 1, no matter how ugly your input is, right? So we got this estimation, which means that for here we have sine x is this, which means this integral goes to zero as n goes to infinity. We've got one over n times some constant, right? So 
this goes to infinity. So it satisfies A, B, and C, which means that for your kernel are good kernels. Well, so let's go to the next theorem. It says that, well, apply theorem 4.1. Apply our important result about um, good kernels. We know that if there are good kernels, then the convolution converges to F at continuous points, right? Well, theorem 5.2 says that if integral on circle, then Fourier series of F is a sorrow summable to F at every point of continuity. So first we have this, right? Because the uh, Fourier kernels are good kernels. And this, remember, we have this, right? Which gives that this goes to F. And this, what is this? This is just this, the Fourier series of F. Right? The Fourier series of F is the Sara summable to F every point of continuity. Right? If it's continuous circle, then uniform uniformly summable. So Sara summable. Right? So now it gives two corollaries. So this corollary we already proven, like we already established before, and this corollary says that continuous function on a circle can be uniformly approximated by trigonometric polynomials. Well, this is kind of interesting, right? Why? Because every trigonometric polynomials are in the form of this, and your Fourier series, right, is also a trigonometric uh, polynomial. See, and this is equal to this, which is again a trigonometric polynomial. And with this, right, we see that, well, continuous on a circle can be uniformly approximated by trigonometric polynomials. Right? So here are some like fantastic results because we're proven properties of good kernels and we proved that Cesaro are, I mean, not Fourier kernels are good kernels. Then we can get this beautiful result and the proofs are just one line proofs right so that's it for this class i mean this lecture